So this is the last of the Sinclair computers I'm emulating on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So as usual I've got my USB keyboard plugged in and VJ plugged in as well. And if I press if I press Shift F8, it will take me into the 1 to 8K, but if I press Shift F9, it will take me into the plus 3, 128K Spectrum plus 3. And uh, so here it's been emulated. So you get the menu up that you would normally get on the plus three when you start it. And here it sh shows that Drive M is available, which is a, like a RAM drive where you can save programs in basic. And I must admit, I do prefer programming in the 1 to 8K basic because you can just type the keywords. I get used to very used to um, the, the where the Commands were on the keys in the day. So they use your program to print out the character set. But I do prefer the actual being able to free type the program in. If you press Shift F1, it takes you back to a menu where you can get back to here. And then you can go to the 48K Basic to run 48K Basic programs. And I've put a, rather than typing in program names, I've uh, put a menu system in. So if I could go to my usual favorite jetpack. And on the 128K Basic one, on the 128K emulators on the Raspberry Pi Pico, this does actually run slightly slower than the 48K base, uh, Spectrum. So the 48K Spectrum runs pretty much at full speed, whereas uh, the 128K stuff runs slightly slower. And I'll go through the reason why that is uh, after I've just demonstrated this game. Uh, it's to do with fitting all the memory into the 250 or pretty much 265k of the Raspberry Pi Pico. It sounds like it should have plenty of room for 1 to 8k, that being 256k of RAM. But it is a bit of a squeeze once you do everything you, you need to do in order to emulate the actual computer. So just get to the end of this level. Yeah, so it goes slightly slower than it should do. So this is how the memory is distributed through my application on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So first of all, I need a frame buffer to store the a frame of pixels for the display. And my terminal application uses 640 by 240 at one byte per pixel. So that gives me 256 colors per pixel. And that consumes 154K of memory. Now that's too much memory being allocated in order to leave my emulator enough for 128k for my 128k spectrum but also the resolution is uh, much higher than the spectrum resolution so the spectrum display is 256 by 192 and so that would leave a huge board around the outside or what i'd have to do is double the pixels so for every pixel i would need to draw two in the y orientation two in the x orientation so i'd be drawing four pixels for every pixel that needed to be done that'd be a waste of CPU power. So instead of doing that, because my frame buffer for the VGA display is actually sent to the display using the PIO on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So it's all done autom automatedly through DMA directly to the PIO and gets sent straight out to the VGA monitor. All we'll I have to do is double the pixel clock for the X, for the scan line, and I then half the number of pixels will go across, so the resolution changes to 320 by 240 
at one byte per pixel still so I'm still getting 256 colors and I only need 16 colors for the spectrum but that's, that's okay so it keeps it nice and simple for actually plotting pixels on the display this way and that halves the memory that I need for frame buffer down to 77 kilobytes also because the like I say the spectrum resolution is 256 by 192 which is the same as the ZX81 and the ZX80 um, display resolution as well it gives me a border around the outside of the um, of the actual display that I'm emulating. So, and as the spectrum has a coloured border, that's uh, that just happens to be turn out to be the a, a good actual width for the border anyway. So that yeah that solves another problem. So in the what up to 265 kilobytes of Pico RAM, so what 77 kilobytes for the frame buffer. So for the 1 to 8K spectrum and the spectrum plus 2 and plus, plus 3, I need 128 kilobytes of RAM. So that has to occur in the RAM because I need to read and write to it. And when I was using that, I, so for the 1 to 8K spectrum, I also need a 16K ROM. And when I tried to run it, I was getting out of memory errors. So I know that the application and the system, so my applications and the C plus, or what, well, just the C system uses 50 kilobytes of that memory uh, my i've minimized as much as i can on my on the global variables and stuff I, I, i've got config variables which need to be global i'm not using i'm um, probably i wouldn't think i'd be using half of that may, may, maybe i'm using about 30k but there's, there's certainly the c system seems to be taking up a cut of like 20k or something i'm not exactly sure exactly how much but that means i've got less than 10k remaining so my 16k of ROM for the Spectrum 128K can't fit in that. Um, so on the next slide, I'll describe what I've had to do. So the 128K of RAM for the Spectrum is divided up into 16K memory areas, each of which can be banked. So that's the actual Spectrum itself can do that. So I, in my emulator, I just had a, a uniform whole 128k of memory allocated to the spectrum memory so actually although the z80 can only address 64k if it could address 128k then it could it's ordered organized in memory in that linear fashion so that it could have just uh, addressed up there uh, but as it can't and what it uses is banking which is what a lot of the computers in those days used for increasing the amount of ram that they could use um, all I do is I use my my mapping. So I had to put mapping in for the ZX80 and the ZX81 because they mirror memory. So they mirror the display memory, which I think was around 4,000, uh, and it mirrors up to C000. Um, so I use that same process to actually uh, bank memory in the in the 128K spectrum. So I can I can do that. And on my emulator on Linux, that's that's fine. It can all fit because there's so much memory it just fits linearly in, in memory but because now on the pico i can do that with the ram 128k ram but the 16k rom used to come in memory after that ram linear linearly after that ram so i would just bank at that as usual but i've had to move that 16k rom over into the into the two megabyte flash memory which is where it gets executed from, but because it's flashes read only, it doesn't matter because it's a it's a ROM file, so because, so it only gets read anyway. So that can be done. But I've had to, I just had to wait one change in my program, which was to change a variable, which is the offset into memory where it's going to map, but it's going to bank that memory. So it was an unsigned long, and now I've just changed it to a, a signed long because the flash memory is above. It, well, I should say below, it's in, in lower memory than the RAM is. So I've had to put a negative offset in there, which is why I ch had to change it to a signed value. So now it can map stuff from, you know, ROMs from anywhere in memory into the actual spectrum or emulated memory. And that solved that problem. Uh, the only issue is that the actual flash memory is actually used to actually provide the program which is running. So the emulator which is running, uh, the ARM processor gets its instructions from the two megabyte flash. So that creates a bit of contention. So when my emulator is asking for bytes of memory out of the ROM, when it's running its emulated program, the actual emulator itself is getting its, uh, is, is 
running from the flash memory so the arm processors try and do that so two things are now happening that's why it kind of slows down a bit so whereas the 48k spectrum is just running everything rom and the ram from ram memory so there's no contention it runs fine it's all written in, in c so it's not you know it's it's fast but it's not as fast as assembly so if i i could actually resolve the slowdown of the 1 to 8k emulation by writing it in this you know changing my z80 emulator and writing it in assembly code but i don't want to do that because it's in c the actual target platform is going to be the sp32 and in c i can just recompile that for the sp32 and it should run there i just have to make my own video drivers for the sp32 uh, so there's a minimum amount of to do there so if i rewrote the z80 assembler uh, the z80 uh, emulator in assembly then i wouldn't actually get any advantage out of doing that when it comes to the sp32 because it just wouldn't run there uh, so i'm going to keep it written in c uh, and it, I, if i want to play games i can play them in the 48k mode if i want to do programming i can do it in the 128k mode i mean i can play the games in the 128k mode it's just that they play slightly slower than than what they should do.